Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. Today, we are here in Tokyo, Japan for the 10 things that shock tourists when they do come here to Tokyo. Now, it's pretty busy here, so I can't film it all right here, but I want you to know there's more than 10 shocks here, and you will get a good kick out of them, but the thing is, you should definitely come to Tokyo because it is shockingly awesome. So, I found a slightly less busy part of the shrine complex here, and the first thing that's going to shock you when you do come here to Tokyo is just how massive this city is. I mean, 35 to 40 million people live in the greater Tokyo metropolitan area, and you can feel that 35 to 40 million people when you fly in. You're like, oh, are we there yet? Oh, wait, there's more city, there's more city, there's more city. Or you're driving in with the taxis and the futuristic look of the, the city and stuff like that, or taking the train in and stuff like that. You can feel how huge this place is. And for tourists, that's a big deal because we're up here in the north, uh, I would say north east of the city and it's really great but the thing is we're staying in the south west part of town and it took us an hour to get here but the thing is is it's so big what i recommend you do is pick out different areas to see so we're here seeing the shrine now the temple here and then we're going to go see the sky tree over there and see things in these different areas so make sure you break up the city because you can't go from place to place to place to place because it's just too big and you don't have enough hours enough enough time to actually go see it all okay now the second thing is going to shock when you come here is the packed trains during rush hour look you're going to be using the subways and the trains to get around town and they are super efficient like crazy efficient that you can get everywhere and they run on time that's shocking for someone coming from a <clears throat> let's say publicly public transport disinclined country and it is really awesome but they do get super packed during rush hour traffic like sardines actually i think you'd prefer to be in a pack of sardines sometimes than you would be on the train because it's so full but what's crazy about it what's shocking about it is how efficiently they get the people on and off at each of the stops like the people will step out of the way let people out then they'll go back in and stuff like that it's crazy and when you're on there one of the little shocks you might see are how the japanese can sleep on the trains i mean we've seen guys you know and it's not like you know drunks or bums or stuff like that oh no, no these are business suited up people things like this just totally out and the thing is when you're doing all this transport and you're doing all this stuff throughout the city you can understand why people might get a little worn down and just nod off a little bit on the train now another thing that's going to shock you is when you're on the metro i know i'm focused on this but they all kind of go together is how quiet it is on the train like when you're out taking the subway around tokyo it's quiet i mean even rush hour it's quiet and it's amazingly quiet when you see all those things and you're not expecting that when you come to such a huge city you expect noise and, and all this kind of stuff here oh no 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 you do not have that in tokyo it is quiet when you are here especially on the metro and another thing that kind of goes along with that when you come or how much you're going to be shocked is how clean the city is i mean i wish my town of 150,000 people were as clean as this 40 million 40 million people metropolis and tokyo is amazingly clean from the food to the parks to the metro the subways the buses the the stores all kinds of stuff and it's just amazing that they can do all that in such a big city and also it kind of goes along with that it's clean but also in tokyo you'll be shocked how safe you feel when you're here Look, I've gone to other mega metropolises like Sao Paulo and, and, and in Mexico and all kinds of other places, and I didn't always feel safe when I went to those huge cities. Here, I feel safe going out at night. I feel safe taking my kids out, having cash with me and things like that. And it is really kind of a cool thing, but it's shocking that you can feel so safe in such a big city. But of course, I mean, pay attention like usual tourist stuff, but in general, Tokyo is super safe. Now, another thing that might shock you is when you come here, you can actually pay for things with your Metro card, with your subway ticket. You know, you might get a, a Suica or a, or a Pasmo card and you can fill that out. And yes, you can do the metros on the train stuff, but also you get a soda, you can buy some food, you can go to the, the convenience stores and do that. And that's kind of a, a cool thing. You're like, wow, I can pay with my stuff. So if I have extra money left over after I've been here, I can actually spend it instead of throwing away that money, which is cool. But also it's kind of important because another thing that's going to shock you when you come to Tokyo is your debit card your bank card from back home probably is not gonna work at the banks here and that kind of sucks so I've seen a lot of shocked tourists going why can't I get money out look you're gonna be shocked that you're gonna need to go to the convenience stores yes the 7-elevens the Lawson's the family marts and stuff like that you're gonna have to go there to get cash out because this is very much a cash dominant society and so you do have to do that but you know it might be a little shocking you're like I need to get money but I can't just go to 7-eleven you'll be okay 
And speaking of those convenience stores, another thing that shocked me was the quality of the food and selection of stuff in the convenience stores here in Tokyo. And not just in Tokyo, but in Japan in general. It's amazing because, you know, you go to a convenience store back home, it's like junk stuff. You know you're going to get sick if you get the cooked food. Oh, no, no. Here, the sushi is really, is actually pretty good. There's hot buns and there's hot drinks and cold drinks, but there's actually food, prepared food stuff that's there. And the thing is, if you want, oh, you can get a packaged soft boiled egg, individually packaged. The convenience stores are actually super convenient. And since they have the ATMs, and also for you tourists, that's gonna be your probably go-to place for breakfast because it's open 24 hours, especially if you got jet lag, man, they're, they're a lifesaver, okay? Now, I would be remiss without mentioning this one kind of shock you will have when you come to Tokyo, and that is sticker shock. Tokyo is not a cheap place to visit. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. It is a pricey place to come to, okay? So be ready for that. And when you come here, one of the things that might shock you is how small the accommodations can be, which means instead of a family of four, it might not be one hotel room. You might have to rent two hotel rooms, which can really jack up the prices. And the thing is, with the prices here, going out to eat and stuff like that, if you're going to Shinjuku, which is one of the famous places to go and go eat, or you're gonna go, you know, the robot restaurant, which actually isn't a restaurant, it's just more of a show, by the way. They have food, but that's not what you're going to be going for. When you're going there, the Shinjuku and these, these more expensive places, the prices go even higher. So what I recommend, to save money when you come here, okay? One thing, rent an apartment. You know, there's lots of Airbnbs and apartment rentals here, and you can go stay there, no problem. Get your food from the convenience stores or the grocery stores and save a ton of cash that way. And another thing that's cool that actually helps you save money when you actually are here, a lot of the sites are free, like when you go into the shrines and stuff like that, you don't have to pay to go into those. You can go in and enjoy them and take them in and not spend any money so you can get around. And probably the coolest part, I know a lot of the accommodation and food are going to be expensive when you are here, but the cool thing is the public transport is actually really affordable. Like, I am super pumped about the prices. We spent almost an hour getting from our apartment to here, and it only costs about 260 uh, yen, so like, I don't know, three bucks or 250 bucks, you know, something like that. I'm like, dang, that is actually pretty cool. But honestly, though, that sticker shock you'll get when you get your, uh, when you get your credit card bill at the end, it, it might be a bit tough, okay? So, just FYI. Now another elephant in the room I have to talk about is the shock you will have when you use toilets here in Tokyo. Look, Japan has evolved past normal humans when it comes to toilets. They have not just heated toilet seats, but they come with remote controls. And maybe an instruction manual will be helpful too. But the thing is, you might get shocked um, when you use the toilet for the first time and the bidet thing comes sticking out and shoots water <clears throat> to clean you off. Okay, so that can be a bit shocking. So just be prepared for that. The thing is, you don't always have the robot toilets everywhere you go. Um, there's also the squat toilets you do have in a lot of public places. But the thing is, the public toilets in Tokyo are also clean. I mean, Jocelyn, who is like the biggest freak ever about cleanliness and always uses potty toppers, hasn't used any potty toppers, used the public bathroom in the zoo because it was clean. And so that's what's cool. What you'll be shocked is how crazy the toilets are here, but also how crazy clean they are as well. So there is that. Now, the next thing might shock you when you come here is that Tokyo that you saw on TV, you know, with the neon lights flashing everywhere, the crazy people dressed up and stuff like that. Yes, you can see that neon glow, crazy anime manga, what the heck is going on? Japan, you can see that here in Tokyo, and it is cool. But what's shocking is that's not everywhere. Tokyo has very different, distinct parts of the city, and you'll be shocked to know that it doesn't always feel like you're getting smashed up with millions of people. You can find quiet parts of town by yourself. I mean, it's amazing. If you go to the parks, you can go to the green spaces, the shrines, and actually think about it. This is a holiday today. You think this place would be packed, and it is quite busy, but you don't feel like you're smashed. So it's really kind of crazy that it can be so big, yet it can feel so small at the same time. But Again, let's go back to that, that neon craziness. Look, the neon craziness here, when you see all the lights flashing, all these kind of things like that, it does make you go, whoa, Godzilla Street? What's going on here? You're gonna see all kinds of things, so make sure you go around. Yes, you should go to Shinjuku and the other districts and check out things. Go to Electric City, go see the anime people and things like that. Yes, if you notice walking around, you see some people in kimonos. That's more uh, for Kyoto, though. You don't see that as much here in Tokyo, but you go around and you see all the shops and all this crazy stuff, you're like, oh my goodness. We've been going around and the kids see the craziest things like can we get that i'm like i, I can't say no to that because it's so insane we never have that in the u.s so that shocking neon tokyo that neon japan you've seen you see that here now another thing that shocks tourists when they come here is the number of restaurants that do pop up all over tokyo and how little english is actually spoken 
Look, Tokyo is a world city. I mean, it's a world industrial hub. But the thing is, English is not a really big thing here. Getting an English menu is super cool to actually happen. Finding one of the servers that might be able to speak a little English is really, really great. But the thing is, it doesn't matter that you don't speak Japanese when you come here, because the people are really friendly. But make sure you know a few words, you know, konnichiwa, like hi, and or, arigato, which is thank you. You want to make sure you know that. But for, for such a big place with so many tourists, you think there'd be more English or more foreign help? There's not really so much. Though the ATMs will have multiple languages, not too many other places do. Which might scare off some tourists, which leads us to the next shock. And that getting scared off and not knowing what to order at a restaurant, you might end up in the street and you see all these vending machines. Look, the shock of seeing vending machines literally every other block, or I should say every other half block, so in the block, in the middle of the block, down back alleys, all kinds of stuff, is really a quintessential part of Tokyo. Yes, you'll get your soda there. You might get your snack there. Your kid might want to get a toy there. Maybe you want to get a shirt from one. There are them all over the city. And what's cool is, yes, they'll take your coins, they'll take your bills, sometimes they'll take your, your metro cards and stuff like that to pay with. And so that's kind of cool. But what I always love is you can get cold and hot stuff when you are there. And that is really neat. And coming from the US where you don't have like cool technology stuff like that, it's kind of one of those things that's shocking, but in a really awesome way. And the 10th thing that'll shock you when you actually do come here is how many sites there are to see in Tokyo. Yes, a town of this size, of course you're gonna have tons of sites, but the museums here, there's such an eclectic mix of museums. If you want a drum museum, they have that. If you want one with Hello Kitty, they have that. If you want my personal favorite, the Tokyo National Museum, that is one you have to go to, or the Tokyo Edo, or Edo Tokyo Museum, to see the history of the city. The modern art museum, the, the science museums that are here, there's multiple science museums going out to the, the island and going checking out the, the, the futuristic city that's there. There's so many cool things to check out here that you can't do you can't do Tokyo in one day. And that's what shocks tourists. They think, oh I could come for like you know five or six days. I'll see this city. No, you can't. You'll be shocked how much more there is to see than you can see in one week when you are here. So you will definitely come back. Now, I hope that helps you know a few of the things that might shock you as a tourist when you do come here to Tokyo. It's an awesome city. If you can't tell by how excited I am about this place, we have all kinds of other videos to help you out. The don'ts of visiting Japan, the shocks of Japan, which actually goes along with this video to really help you out to know more. Because I'll be honest, you'll be shocked that Tokyo isn't really super representative of the rest of the country. Kind of like New York isn't super representative of the rest of the US or London of the rest of England so do check out and go explore more of the country when you do come here to Tokyo because with the super fast trains which I didn't even get into you can see so much of this fantastic country and the people are super nice and you will have a great time and you'll eat wonderfully though you might not know what you're eating or how to eat it you're still gonna love it anyway I'll say bye from Tokyo